Hi, this is Joe, and welcome back for another video. This is a follow-up video on the e-bike, the Jetson Bolt Pro. This bike is commonly available at Costco and under some different names out on Amazon and eBay. There's an earlier model without the pedals, and then there's the later model with the pedals. I'm assuming that most of these bikes uh, are manufactured uh, by either the same or slightly different manufacturers but probably most of the parts are interchangeable a couple things is I've called uh, I've called Jetson and asked about replacement parts if you go to their website and look pretty much everything for components for this bike is out of stock and when I asked them about replacement parts for example like consumables like brake pads brake discs batteries tires things like that they said oh we'll get back to you I never hear a reply or a response back from them so what I've done is I've gone out and done some research and I found some parts you can uh, replace on your own e-bikes and without having to rely on the manufacturer the battery is a 36 volt battery. It's a lithium ion battery. On the website, it's listed as out of stock. I've come up with a solution, a fairly inexpensive solution for a replacement battery. I'm waiting for, for some parts to arrive, and when those parts get in, I'll put together a video on uh, how to replace your battery yourself. This video, I've uh, gone out and I found some brake pads that are compatible with the Jetson Bolt. Let me uh, get those and show you those. If you go to your local uh, uh, bicycle shop, one of the common manufacturers is SRAM. I believe that's how you pronounce it. These uh, pads come in a, a complete set. So you have two pads. You would need two pads for the front and two pads for the rear. This part number is a, a BB5. Again, these are disc pads. They run, at least at the bicycle shop where I purchased them, $17 before tax. So what I'll do is uh, I will show you how to change and adjust the brake pads. And then again, once parts come in, I'll show you how to do uh, replace your own battery pack. So let's get started. We're looking at the rear wheel here. I'm going to show you how to change the pads on the rear wheel, but the front wheel and the front pads, it will be the exact same procedure. The brake calipers and the adjustments and the way the caliper mounts to the frame is the same in both the front and rear wheel. What you're going to need is a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. And you're going to need some blue Loctite. Don't buy the red. Red requires heat to loosen it. When you first take these off for the first time, you're probably going to have to use um, a little bit of leverage to break these loose the first time. Uh, then when you put the bolts back in for the final time, you want to get yourself some blue Loctite. Don't use the red. That's a permanent uh, thread locker and you need to heat it up to remove it. So you want to use the blue Loctite, which is a medium strength uh, removable replaceable Loctite. So what you want to do, first off, is you want to uh, loosen these two bolts here. And again, the first time it might be a bit tough, so you might have to put a, a little piece of pipe on here, use some leverage. So, But I've already loosened these. So you want to loosen these bolts and then you want to remove the bolts. You don't have to disconnect the cable to your brake, your brake handles. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to pull the calipers off. So you're going to take your bolts out and the caliper is just going to slip right off of the caliper disc here and as we turn this over you can look inside right here and you'll see the two pads the uh, part number on here is F180 slash R160 okay. there's also a an adjuster here so you can adjust the tension on the pads when the caliper is sitting up against the uh, the disc. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this adjuster. Again the 5 millimeter Allen wrench will get it off for you. Now between the pads there is a spring. So we want to gently remove this spring 
the uh, when you purchase new brake pads they will give you a new spring and the purpose of this spring is to keep the pads separated uh, and under spring tension so hang on to that now if you look inside you'll see one side of the pad and there's a little square hole here so in order to get these pads out what you want to do is take the upper one pull it out of the way and then what you want to do is lift up on the bottom one and you want to very gently slide that bottom pad out and as you can see you have a steel plate on one side you have your brake pad media on the other side and you have the little square hole keep an eye that square hole is where the spring goes put this pad off to the side then you can take the upper pad and the same way it will slide out very easily so we pulled the pads now we can get the new pads and again this is the SRAM and they're the BB5 part number with this set of pads you'll get two pads and a new spring so you want to put the new pads and the new spring in take the two pads you also notice that there's two little square holes and that's where your springs go in so it doesn't matter which spring goes on or which uh, pad goes on which side how you want to do this you want to go back to where the adjuster is and you want to take the pad and you want to put it pad side down against the caliper stick the pad in feed it through the little hole and then you want to lift up on this pad to get it up into the slot so you can feed the next pad in. This particular pad is going to go pad side up and you're going to slide that in the same way. Get your uh, top pad out of the way, pull that in and now both pads are inside of the, the caliper. Put your finger to keep the pads from falling out. You want to get your spring you want to pinch that spring gently put it between the two arms on the pad and slip that in inside of the caliper and then what you want to do is you want to jiggle the spring and then you'll notice that the little pin on that spring will go inside of that square hole. You can't see the other one, so you but you can jiggle the spring and what you want to make sure is that you can't pull that spring out. It will if you pull hard, but once we adjust this the tension on these pads, you then won't be able to pull the spring out. At this point you want to take your adjuster cap and you want to gently screw this in and you want to look at the look at the gap and you want to just bring that adjuster in and then which at this point this will give you enough clearance to take the caliper and put it back on the disc at this point you can take your bolts you can line up your holes at this point I'm uh, I, at this point if you're doing it for the final time put your thread locker on at this point but my pads are still good so after this video I'm gonna put the original pads back on so I'm not going to thread lock it but if you're doing it thread lock your your bolts back on always start your bolts using your fingers you don't want to run the risk of stripping the threads once the bolts are started get your five millimeter allen wrench and at this point we can tighten the bolts on the caliper and then what you want to do is you want to tighten these you want to tighten them snug 
you don't want to over tighten them and you always want to make sure that you have your thread locker on when you tighten these for the last time. Now you have to adjust that cap on the back. So take your Allen wrench coming from the back side if you, if you have to jiggle your wheel a little bit and what you want to do is turn this cap in until it tightens up against the brake caliper and then you want to back that off about a quarter of a turn then what you can do is you can lift the bike up spin the wheel make sure that wheel turns freely and doesn't bind the caliper against the pad turn the bike on and then what you can do is lift the wheel spin the wheel and apply the brake to make sure that the caliper is working that there's not too much drag of the caliper on the disc if there is then you want to loosen that adjusting screw on the back of the caliper but again if you take it all the way snug to where it's tied up against the disc back it off a quarter of a turn you should be just fine make sure these two bolts are tight and uh, that is how you replace the pads on a Jetson Bolt Pro e-bike I'm going to come back in another video and show you how you can come up with a, a battery replacement solution for right around $100. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll see you next time.